for at least 10 years, I've been thinking about how people that look at the climate system think that they see evidence of positive feedback. For instance, if you have an unusually warm period in the tropics, you'll typically find that there's fewer low clouds. And they'll say, well, see, when the tropics warm up, that there's fewer clouds, which lets more sunlight in, positive feedback. It enhances the warming. And I always wondered, how do they know that it was the warmer sea surface that caused the fewer clouds, or it was the fewer clouds that caused the warmer sea surface? OK? I mean, it's a simple cause and effect question, right? Well, I've got a PhD computational physicist that works with me, very talented, Danny Braswell. He's my co-author. He said, oh, the modelers couldn't be that dumb. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, well, you're probably right, but let's, let's see. So we came up with the world's smallest climate model. All of those fancy climate models ultimately must collapse, basically, to this simple equation. All this says is on the left-hand side, the change of temperature with time is caused by the stuff on the right-hand side. Now, of course, the modelers are interested in that term called mankind. That's mostly carbon dioxide we're adding, OK? The next term is a feedback term. Feedback means when the temperature changes, it changes something else. So that little alpha T, that represents all of the feedbacks in the climate system. And then nature. Now, to climate modelers, nature means volcano. So when I say nature, what I mean is natural variability. For instance, you know how complicated clouds are, right? Now, do you think the cloud cover on a day-to-day -day basis of the Earth is perfectly constant day after day after day after day after day? You know, point seven one zero two percent one day and the same the next day? No, I don't think so. So I said, what if, as part of nature, you get random noise? Mankind, I'm going to assume that's zero because I'm interested in seeing what natural climate variability does. Feedbacks. Now, this is a magic number. 3.3 watts is the magic number. And this is why climate modelers are so worried about catastrophic global warming. When you heat up the earth, or you even heat up your stove at home, for every degree that it heats up, it puts out more infrared radiation. It's a natural cooling process at a rate of about 3.3 watts per, per square meter per degree, OK? Now, that's the natural cooling process. And they usually don't call it a feedback, but it really is a feedback. Now, I'll scare you about the coming global warming arm again. See that 3.3 watts? That's what cools the Earth. If there are positive feedbacks that can offset that 3.3 watts, if you get positive feedbacks that add up to more than that, we're in a heap of trouble. <laughs> because that's where you get your tipping points. You have an inherently unstable climate system. And the climate modelers will tell you, well, but you know, there is a lot of uncertainty about cloud feedback, sure, but isn't it just as likely that the cloud feedbacks are going to make global warming really bad as they are, you know, not a problem at all? And I say, no, this has nothing to do with probability. The Earth is what it is. It has a certain climate sensitivity. We don't know what it is. We're trying to find out what it is. You know, when the IPCC says they're 90% certain of something, it has nothing to do with probability. It has to do with their faith. OK, so what we did is we ran this uh, model with just daily noise and low cloud cover. That is a 30-year temperature trace that we took at random out of many hundreds of runs that we made. Look at the temperature variability. Even on a 10-year time scale, that is entirely caused by daily random cloud cover variation. This is not our discovery. This has been known for decades, but nobody ever talks about it. The climate system, even represented with this simple linear, linear equation that only has three terms, causes all of that structure in the sea surface temperature that you see there. If cloud changes force temperature changes, it can only go one way energetically. Fewer low clouds can only lead to a warmer surface, not to a cooler surface. So what this represents is a positive feedback error there in estimates when you're looking at the climate system that are fundamentally tied to mixing up cause and effect when you look at the climate system. This thing that, oh, they should have thought of this. 
Well, no. Okay, now, to show that this isn't me with my crazy idea, we wrote up this paper, we submitted it to employment. I submit, submitted it there because I was directly criticizing the most recent feedback theory of somebody that published in 2006 two papers on this. I mean, part of the IPCC process, okay? Directly criticizing how he was getting this. He, he had the nature, the nat natural variability term out there too in his equation, but he said, if it's random, it doesn't matter if we can ignore it. But what I just showed you is if it's random, it does matter. Well, <clears throat> of course, the reviews for our paper went to him since we were criticizing his work and to Isaac Held, who, those of you who know about the climate community, you know, he's one of our earliest climate modelers, you know, very prestigious kind of guy. Anyway, they both came back, I couldn't believe it, they both said, you're right. In fact, the guy who I was direct, that I was directly criticizing said, you're right, we were wrong in our paper. <laughs> Can you believe that? This is a plot of all the IPCC models, that circle with all the red points. This is from the guy's paper that I was criticizing. The left side of the graph shows global warming. So going up along the graph, that's bad. The higher up you go, the more warming there is. And warming is directly related to climate sensitivity. That's why all the data fall kind of like along a line. In other words, as you go up to the right, the higher the climate sensitivity, the more warming you'll get by the year 2100 based on some assumptions of how much extra CO2. Well, guess what? The observations say, and these aren't my observations. See that first blue thing that just says observations, interannual variability? That is actually published in the same paper that has all those red dots. In other words, they're admitting that all of the climate models are more sensitive than even they measure the climate system to be when they look at real satellite data. Now that red diamond is the theoretical no feedbacks case. That's the thing that I was talking about where if you don't CO2 and nothing else changes, that's how much warming you get. And then see that bottom blue one, that's our observations of the system in the tropics. If, if that's actually what's happening on the globe, that's how much global warming you would see uh, by the end of this century. It's around half a degree C. In summary, I think the recent evidence is showing more and more that the real climate system is less sensitive than the climate modelers think it is. And, uh, you know, when you shake up what everybody has assumed to be true forever, it takes at least three or four years before people start to accept it. So I, I think that's what's going to happen. I just hope that it's not totally ignored. And... Um, so now hopefully you know that there's actually some real scientists publishing some real data that aren't saying we're all going to burn up. If I don't ever make any more significant findings in my career other than these two pieces of work, I'll die a happy man.